cloud. There we go. Thank you. Uh, anyone else like to share uh, their language knowledge or what they hope to learn and how they're doing it? Peyton. I'm speaking Russian right now. Also Russian. Mm -hmm. And did you have another language before that? Um, no, I just, I'm taking Russian, that's it. And, but you are studying English too, right? We yeah. all study our own language. How yeah. has that helped you learn Russian? Um, well, my sister also took Russian, so if I had questions, she could help me with those. And sometimes there's like cognates, so it's similar to how the English is, so I can just use that as a clue. Uh, okay, good. Is there anyone from Ljubljana who speaks a little Russian? Mm, I don't. I don't know for the others. Uh -huh. I wonder if there's some cognates. Is there anyone else from Ljubljana who does? Slovenian students. Hello. Hello. <laughs> there you are. I don't speak Russian. Okay. Uh, okay. So, that's fine. That's fine. That maybe there might be some similarities, but no. Oh, and here it's Bia. They are coming in from Berlin. Yay. Okay. And welcome, Davin and Ileana. Rachel Edmonds. Welcome. And who do we have here? Hello. Good. Hi. Here. Hello, Bea and Arwen. Great. Okay. Just a few, a little bit of housekeeping. We just uh, went round and uh, Bea, good, we can see you. Just warming up a little bit. I'd uh, like to welcome you to Screen360 TV. This is our pilot, uh, the beginning, and Hi. all of you. I'm Arianna. Um, I speak English and French. Hmm. Oh, that's Ileana. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I remember that. And, and look, uh, we'll be publishing a little bit more of a schedule for what? next week. Hi. And uh, after... After For Ina Moment, Andreas' film, we're going to be showing uh, Les Frémisons uh, de Thé, The Way of Tea. And uh, somebody could actually translate Frémison. Uh, I've read that it is the thrill of tea. I wonder if that is correct. So, and uh, Mary, thank you for introducing this project to Kate. We're so happy that she and her students are here with us. Excellent. And uh, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. We're All right. Um, just a little housekeeping. We are, of course, very aware that sometimes there's something called a Zoom bomb. Uh, our protocol is to immediately turn that tile off uh, visually. Then we turn off the sound. And Dee Dee is here as co-pilot. And she will take over while I go do what I need to do to that uh, bomber, <laughs> whatever, the, the Zoom bomber. So just to uh, a few words about that to let you know that we are quite aware and have arrived at a protocol. Um, we will, uh, let's see, we will begin this <coughs> today, uh, introduce Andreas, show the film, and then uh, have a Q&A afterwards and uh, go through um, some questions that we have put together and we will offer you a survey afterwards and we would love for you to fill that out because that supports our research and we are doing screen 360 tv because we believe that you all want to know other your peers in the world and we believe that now, like no other time before, we have the capacity to connect. And that's for the better. We are laying down a, an a early layer of 
connection so that in the future you can collaborate together. And so that said, you are uh, able to connect with the other teachers through Screen360 TV. And afterwards, if you'd like to do that, just uh, send us an email. Um, very good. Let us begin by introducing Andreas Schaefer. And uh, if you switch to speaker view now, Andreas will come up and I will introduce Andreas and tell us one thing about for Ina Moment, which we're going to be seeing. Well, there's one thing I could say is actually it was uh, the first year at my film school in Potsdam Babelsberg. The, the whole first year was a documentary program and we were supposed to do a final film at the end of that year. And we were supposed to find something that thrilled us personally. And the circumstance was that we were supposed to shoot that on film, on real 35 millimeter, 60 millimeter negative film, which made it a little more complicated because we didn't have endless footage. So we just had 50 minutes to document whatever we wanted to document. And this is also the reason why the film looks the way it looks. It's very analog and not digital at all. And I think it's a beautiful film. And Andreas has been wonderful to allow us to work with his film through many years of Screen360 TV's testing. And, um, and I feel it's a timeless film. And with it, it's, it's simple and accessible and uh, accessible to all ages. So uh, I will ask you all now to mute yourselves um, I'm going to bring the film up and we will run our trailer in front of it and then just a few seconds <laughs> afterwards it will, um, oh this is beautiful Maria, thank you, it, the film will run. So thank you again for joining us, stay tuned and if everyone will please mute themselves. Was ist das Schöne dran? Also, ich bin nun jemand, der sehr viel Wert drauf legt auf den Moment, mich, mich einzustellen und nicht nach Rezepten zu legen.
ja damals, auch wir sind öfters im Schwimmbad gewesen und ja, dann Spaß gehabt vom, vom Brett zu springen. Und ähm, ich habe es immer so mit der Gefährlichkeit gehabt. Ich meine, die, die bewundernden Blicke von den Mädchen, die reizen schon. <lacht> Wichtig ist es, ist die Temperatur. Die Temperatur, äh, man kommt in die Halle. Ach, oh, heute ist aber kalt. Ja. Heute habe ich ja gar keine Lust. <lacht> Wer ist denn alles da? Ach, bin ich wieder alleine noch. <lacht> Dann fragt man sich, wie bist du in Form? Was willst du jetzt heute machen? Wichtig ist es auch auf dem Turm, wenn man auf dem Turm steht, wo guckt man hin? Mir ist nämlich mal passiert, dass ich jemand mit dem Finger auf den Kopf geschwungen bin. Und so schon als, als Jugendlicher. Aber das sieht man immer noch. Aber um dann wirklich den schwierigen Sprung zu machen, ja, da muss man einen besonders guten Tag haben oder man muss einen guten Trainer haben, der, der einem die Angst nimmt und ihm einem sagt, machst du doch. <lacht> oder jetzt mach endlich mal. <lacht> Ja, ja, es wird oft äh, von der Überwindung der Angst gesprochen. Und viele sa äh, sagen, naja, es gehört dazu. Ja? Ja, willst du nochmal hier hinstellen? Du kannst du, das ist ganz einfach. Du kannst du. Ich habe dich auch ganz oft hier schon unter Springen sehen. Das sah immer gut aus. Du schaffst es. 
Du musst es doch nur einmal probieren. Guck mal, sie kann das auch. Und du kannst es genauso schön. Guck mal, die ist ganz fest im Bauch. Kann gar nichts passieren. Ja. Ich komme gleich wieder. Ich muss das Ja, eigentlich darf man gar nicht so viel beim Sprung denken. Ja, ja, man wird wirklich ziemlich schnell. Aber der Kitzel, äh, der Gefahrenkitzel ist, ist es nicht. Sicher nicht. Wenn man merkt, man hat während des Fluges wirklich den Körper in Kontrolle, merkt, die Glieder sind gestreckt und man kommt gut ins, ins Wasser, das ist schon Genuss. Und diesen Genuss, dem jagt man schon nach. Also ich kann nicht sagen, dass ich da irgendeinen Vergleich gefunden habe. Okay, I'd like to welcome you all back. Sorry, there we go. There we are. Welcome back, Andreas. Is everyone back with us? Is there anyone who has a, a question that they want to ask right away? You can raise your hand, I believe, in the chat there is a, a hand raise, or if it's, uh, or you can simply open up your microphone and ask. And I have a question, if you don't. So, Andreas, when we were talking the other day, you had a question that you would like to ask the audience. Yeah. I was. I would like to know if uh, some of you has experienced a different, uh, a similar situation, not necessarily in sports, but th this moment where you have a lot of fear, and how it ended. How did you deal with it? Is there anyone hand raise? How did you get over a fear? Maybe. Hi. Who is that? Uh, that's Ileana. Hi, Ileana. Um, Great. And I say that, in my opinion, the best way to get over to a fear is that if you're afraid of something, you just go and do it. Huh. How did you learn that? What, 
Can you tell us about something that you did to to learn that? Well, um, I'm thinking of a specific time because I can't really remember a specific time. Well, well there's one. Um, so I no, I can't think of anything. I'm sorry. That's a, that's all right. No, thank you. But that's thank always you. well. Or maybe mm, no. I don't know. <laughs> sorry. Maybe the first the first time you actually spoke with a a French person, tried your French with a French person. How was that? Um, I have no idea, honestly, when the first time that was. Because I've been learning French since I was like four. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. So for me, the, when I was learning Spanish the first time, then speaking with someone who wasn't my teacher, that was a little scary. Oh. That was a little. Scary. Currently, I'm also. Oh, go ahead. Oh, currently, I'm also learning Latin, and while I find it myself very hard to be able to come up with words on the spot, I can read it okay. And that must help you with other languages for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, is there another story about overcoming something you were fearful of or nervous to try? And you just went ahead and did it. Paul. Uh, can, I, can I speak up for a second? Yeah. Um, when I was first learning French, the watershed for me was when I was 15 and I moved out of the classroom and out of my family <laughs> and into a French family uh, in Montgeron-Con near Paris. And I was terrified. I had learned language in the traditional way, which is to say, you better not make a mistake. Um, I've learned since then that learning a language is a constant battle between the tyrant of perfection, which is who you learn from in your ordinary classroom situations, and the goddess of, of communication. And the tyrant is that teacher with the ruler and the red pen, and every time you miss an accent, she marks a big red circle around it and says, no, c'est aigu, c'est pas brave. Bon, uh, uh, you know, um, and that does teach you, but it teaches you as though there was somebody there with a whip threatening you if you make a single mistake. The goddess of communication says, just wait a minute, make yourself understood. You can perfect it later. Just get your point across. Mm. So when I was 15, I was in this French household, people I'd never met. Um, the guy was, you know, a blue collar packer in a fruit factory or something. This was not what I was used to, not what I was expecting. And I was sitting there at the table, first meal, and I wanted some bread. And because of the tyrant of perfection, my mind started thinking, okay, how do I say this? Est-ce que je peux avoir du pain, s'il vous plaît? Uh, I, I wonder, is that right? Um, if it's not right, I'm gonna get in trouble. I better not. And I realized I wasn't getting any bread. And then the goddess whispered in my ear, she says, just, just say it, they'll get the message. You know the word for bread, the rest will kind of be implied. So I just said, je peux avoir du pain, s'il vous plaît? And they looked at me and they smiled and they passed me the bread. And I realized that communication is really the key. Perfection is a good thing, but it, you can't expect to be perfect at first. You have to learn to be imperfect and then you polish it. It's like, it's like polishing a piece of stone. You don't start off with the fine polish. You start off with the rough stuff and you clear off the rough edges and then you get it smoother and sooner or later you can actually see light reflecting off of it. And if you keep polishing, sooner or later it shines. That's lovely. Uh, la la Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Really nice to hear about uh, the goddess of communication because, yes, and Kate, you probably have um, insights to perfectionism and avoiding it and just trying things, right? I, I Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, I, I, I was asking you to unmute if you would just, there you are. Uh, I was just thinking when uh, Andres asked the question and I actually just recently learned how to ride a dirt bike 
for the first time. And I was terrified to uh, put my hand on the gas and rev it. Um, and I realized that managing expectations is part of kind of submitting to that fear and running through worst case scenario, what happens? Okay, well, I crash and I hurt myself. And you pick yourself up and you get back on the bike and you try it again or you give it up completely and you know and determined not to ride a dirt bike but it ended up working out okay and i i i um accepted that i might crash and fall and i was okay with that and that's when i was able to kind of rev that gas and take off and well now i'm an expert so yeah yeah that's nice um some of the students from Ljubljana, all, all of the students, are nursing students. Can you tell us, um, you're so brave to become nurses, what, what might have been some of the things that you um, are anticipating, maybe a little nervous about, but you're going to do it? Right, let's see, Anastasia? Maybe Katarina, Vesna and Jan. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, can I say something? Yes, hello, Arwen, please. Hi, um, when I was uh, last year in France, I ordered a lemonade uh -huh. yeah i spoke the first time french not in my classroom and yeah ah, and bravo bravo and earlier we asked we took a poll about how many languages are spoken and most people here are either learning a language or speak two languages already. How about you, Arwen? Yeah, I speak German and a little, I'm learning French, yeah, French. And uh, I can speak a little bit English. Well, I think you're speaking English very well right now. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha bravo. bravo. <laughs> Good. Now, um, what about jumping from high places, Andreas? What did you learn from watching those little kids jump off? Did you try it? No, 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 not at all, because this was one of the reasons why I chose the subject, because I myself, I'm afraid of height. And I said, I want to challenge myself and I'll be up to that platform for a whole day with a professional diver, which, who we see at the beginning. And um, just to see how they deal with that. And in the, in, in the end, my whole team, my film team, they all wanted to jump off the 10 meter platform, but I didn't do it. <laughs> but I had a great time up there. <laughs> <laughs> we saw the camera coming very close to uh, the, the small, yeah. small divers. Uh, amazing the resolve that little boy, when he just pulls up his suit and he's ready to go. And uh, I'm, I, I think of him, the, the little diver, when uh, I need a little more courage. <laughs> the little diver. Yeah. yeah. yeah but, it's, but it's an interesting place because I discovered this when I moved to Berlin and I saw that there is this art training center and there's this little dramas going on every day with all kinds of ages. And this sport was so foreign to me that I said, okay, maybe I'll understand it a little better when I do a film about it. Mm, mm. Uh, Francois Truffaut said, I'm going to make a film in English in order to learn English. <laughs> so I also uh, like that attitude about wanting to learn something and so making a project out of that. And uh, your, your intention was to gain some insight to it without knowing anything about it at all. Yeah, so, particularly interesting for me was that it's so, it's so, it's, it's happened so much on the inside. The sport itself is very short. The, the time that you can actually present what you're able to is only one second, whereas a 
for example, a football match is 90 minutes. If you're not good at the beginning, well, you then you go for it at the second half, which is kind of difficult in high diving. And it all happens inside of you. There's, there's no teammates. It's all just inside of you. And so I thought it might be interesting just to have a very concentrated look on people concentrating. Oh, yeah, yeah, very much. Any response to that? The, the interest of non-movement, really, and, and going deeper, that's a difficult thing to convey uh, in film. Yeah, it is. But at the same time, it's, it's kind of, it's a, you leave up uh, a free space for the, for the spectator so that they can project their own experience or their own imagination into what they see, which I find, yeah, pretty interesting, even in, in, in other films that I like. Sure, sure. The, the film as mirror, as Kate and I were talking about last night, right. The, the mirror and uh, or the window both very much so yeah. the in insight into this into the sport but also reflection on yourself and that is the beautiful thing about film especially film that is from a foreign country that you have no idea about you don't know the language but you step into it to have the window into that and the mirror to yourself and that's uh, what international film can do for us uh, in the place of travel and that's what travel does for us um, Andreas I wanted to know about the narrator and yeah. the, the older voice and in such a beautiful way this uh, makes the the film accessible to all audiences and the, the three generations that you present tell us more about that yeah, as we spoke about that the sports mostly happens on the inside, I wanted to have something from the inside brought to the outside. That was part of the concept from the very beginning. And so I thought it's quite easy. There are so many people at the, at the training centers. Somebody will tell me something interesting. But that wasn't the case. Everybody was telling me about discipline, about how the exercise go, and yeah. all about these technical aspects that did not really interest me. I was more about philosophy, about life experience. And so when the film was already edited, uh, somebody said, why don't you go and uh, find yourself uh, a senior high diver, somebody who has, you know, uh, already done that for 30 or 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I got two telephone numbers from people who are not really professionals, but uh, yeah, just to be able to call them up. And I called him up and he said, I'm not the right person because uh, I only started high diving when I was 50 years old, oh, so quite late. But from the voice I heard and from the, phil uh, the philosophical aspects he brought, I said, you are, you're the right man. I'm going to see you. I'm going to come to your place and I'm going to record just your audio. Because the film was already edited, I had no chance to film him because the film stock was already used up. And I had a very, very nice conversation with him. And then I sat down and, yeah, you know, looked for extracts that would match the, the film that, I, that was already edited. Wow, that's really working with what you have and yeah. the constraints of production, right? Wow. Which, which was part of the, the intention of this kind of exercise. They wanted us to get creative and yeah, it made me great. It was, yeah, it was a good, good lesson. Uh, did you consider the rule of three when you uh, did that? What do you mean by that? The rule of three rather than uh, three representations for a balanced film. No, not, not consciously, no. Mm. Well, I knew that I wanted, I wanted the very young and I wanted a, a young, well, the, the high diver that you would usually see in the Olympic Games. And then later I thought, yeah, it might be, might be interesting to have somebody rather old to, come to accomplish that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, super, super. Uh, anybody ever try to uh, write a story with constraints like that or even make a film or make something where you had very little time, uh, just a few tools? Anyone? Now uh, you will. You just wait in time. <laughs> and um, 
Uh, Dee Dee, we're doing fine on time. Thank you. I'm following the notch notch. <laughs> yeah, good. Um, um, what I want to ask the audience, in hearing the German, uh, did you hear any words that were familiar? Dana. Uh, yeah, I took German for like a quarter in sixth grade. Uh -huh. And I heard Gutenberg, and that's the word that stood out to me, where I knew like what the language is being, that was being said. Okay, okay, good. How did, how did you, how do you read the subtitles? What's it like for you when you, when you see subtitles and you're watching a film? Um, I feel like it's kind of better, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why, but. Do you, do you find, the, are you, are you nodding your head? You're looking at the words and looking up at the screen or how is it? How do you watch? Oh, when the subtitles are on? Mm -hmm. I usually just, I can like see kind of both. So I read at the same time when I like look up. Yeah. Okay. It, do you, how do you feel? Are you relaxed or does it make you feel a little anxious if the subtitles go by and you haven't finished them? No, I'm relaxed. Uh, see, that's great. That's an excellent way to watch a subtitled film. It's just to sit back and sort of let it happen to you, right? Nice job, Dana. Thank you for showing us that, telling us that. Good. Anybody else have any insights to the way they watch a film with subtitles or they get a little nervous when they see subtitles? Anybody? Okay. I did initially. I, I was wa reading them and they'd go by too fast sometimes and and then I watched films with eight-year-olds and there were subtitles. I thought, what do these eight-year-olds know that I don't know? <laughs> and they were very relaxed. And then when I interviewed people who had been eight-year-olds watching films, they said, well, sometimes I watch the subtitles, sometimes I watch the film. And it's, it's fine. It's the whole production. Subtitles are part of them. And um, some people are put off by subtitles, but we try and encourage them just to enjoy the entire production and with subtitles being part of them. And we make a word association, I think. I, I prefer to watch films with subtitles than anything else. Can I say something? Yes, Taya. Uh, sometimes I watch the films or a show without um, subtitles because I more understand what is going behind the scenes. Behind. I more understand the story of the film. You know? Oh, that's excellent, Taya. Thank you. Um, have you been watching <laughs> subtitled films for a long time? Uh, yes, I, um, I was watching uh, films or shows without subtitles be, uh, when I was much younger in the middle school. Mm. Um, because I was, uh, because on that way I was studying English also Spanish and I, when I watched uh, telenovelas, uh -huh. uh, yes, and um, on that way I learned uh, a, a lot of English. I'm, I, I more understand English because I already know some of the words, you know. Okay. Oh, that's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah, so you... You already use films to support your language learning. Bravo. That's, that's great to hear. That's great to hear. Paul has his hand raised. Thank you. Sometimes I find it most interesting when I watch subtitled films, uh, particularly if I actually understand the language, to see the differences between the subtitles and my own understanding, sometimes my own certain knowledge of what they're actually saying on screen. The subtitles aren't always right. And if they're not blatantly wrong, they sometimes provide a very different interpretation or a somewhat different interpretation from what you might 
here from the same text. So I find subtitled films extremely instructive mm -hmm. because the, 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 there is no right answer. There's a pretty good right answer. I mean, if somebody says, quieres venir conmigo? And they say, no. And the subtitles read, yes. Uh, that's wrong. We know that. But if there's more nuance, the subtitles will only convey whichever nuance the translator decides to convey. Now, these are not rank amateurs writing these subtitles. They're professionals who do this for a living. But even so, the subtitles are only one version of what may be said on the film. And you need to think critically about them if you understand the language. So no matter that I've been speaking French since the 1960s when I was 11 years old, I still watch the subtitles to see if what I'm translating in my mind and you can't really do that. You have to learn a language without translating at first. Um, but what I'm hearing in my mind is either perfectly consistent with the subtitles or not at all consistent with the subtitles, or maybe the person doing the subtitles could have done a better job of expressing what was actually said. Sometimes they actually leave stuff out. So subtitles are important. They're not just a crutch. They are something that helps you to enhance your enjoyment of a film. Yeah. Here, here. Here, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Mary, can I ask you, when did you see your first film with subtitles? Oh, I am much older than most of your audience here, so it was a long time ago. Um, Were you under 16 or under eight? Uh, under 16, probably in my early teenage years, I would think. Okay, lucky you, yeah. lucky you, because mm -hmm. uh, and did someone introduced it to you, was it a family member or a teacher? No, it would have been a teacher, it would have been in my French classes in school. Ah, okay, yeah. okay. And it, was, and it was wonderful to be able to use that as a vehicle to learn the language, and as Paul said, learn the nuances. Uh, I think that was really instructive, I think the idea that um, what is what a perspective a character might have in their delivery might not be translated exactly through the, the language, but through um, idioms. I think it was a great way to learn idioms and to learn expressions in, in a language that we may not have in, in English. So for me, it was, it was a wonderful experience. Yeah, well, that's great. So you were lucky. Mm -hmm. And uh, we find that the language, foreign language learners are the lucky ones who get to see foreign films. But yeah. if, if it's not a foreign language teacher or parent or family friend who likes foreign films, then a lot of people don't get it. And it really shouldn't be left up to luck. That exactly. And that's film. why I hope this experience will, will spread the love, you know, and allow these students to carry it, you know, beyond the classroom to their friends. And, and you know, yes. that exposure is really important. In, in fact, that's a good segue to talk about our um, post-film analysis. What we're doing right now with the Q&A is uh, the analysis, but we also have a post-film analysis that we will send out to each one of you. And I've got it right here. I can share it with you and we can take a look at it together. Yeah. There it is, and you get to see a little bit of, I cleaned up my desktop for you. <laughs> um, so this is the first, the film analysis, we're asking director's name. You can fill this out on your own. Uh, this is supporting our research, with also, which also has to do with memory and how international film impacts your memory differently than, um, regular film or actually not in so much in comparison, but how it uh, impacts your, your memory and continues potentially to uh, in, enrich your life. And we hope that it enriches your life in a way that you're comfortable with things that are foreign, outside of your borders. And even potentially cognitive science says there's something called a directive memory that uh, with a, a momentous learning event, and we hope that this isn't a momentous learning event, it plants a vivid memory that continues to contribute to your life. And that could even direct 
the choices that you make uh, as you grow up. So to learn a language, to pursue a particular, something that you saw, maybe even high diving. Maybe. Anybody want to try high diving after Andreas's film? <laughs> Andreas. So um, that's our research. And um, we're hoping that you will enjoy helping us with that research by uh, answering this film analysis afterwards and actually making a recommendation to someone who is either another teenager or a family member and bringing them to the film if, if they uh, would like to come and your teacher feels it's all right, we certainly welcome them to come. And uh, two weeks from now, we're going to send you what we call the recollector. And I'm gonna stop my share right here. And the recollector looks something like the, the survey I just showed you. And it just has a couple of questions, mainly to refresh the memory of the film. And maybe it will even bring up something that you hadn't thought of before. And we just ask you to write that for us and uh, send it to us so that we'll, we can continue our research. Good, good. So any questions? Um, there is, uh, any, any questions? Any questions? There's one, well, two last parts to this project. What I'd like to do, since we have, I think, uh, a manageable number of people, I'd like to go around the room and ask you each what was similar in your life and what was different. Okay, and we'll record that. So we'll go one by one, um, starting with, with Nina. Okay, so Nina, you would take off and you, uh, take off your mute and then go ahead and begin to speak. So your question was to clarify what's similar? What is similar to your life in the film? What was similar oh, in your okay. life and what was different? Okay, um, well, I guess, you know, since the whole, it's a sports topic, sports-based, I, I guess you could say, and I, I also play a sport. Um, it's different, it's a different sport. I play volleyball, but I do get, that feeling where you have this fear because you feel like you're not going to do your best. I definitely do get that feeling a lot um, because, you know, it's because of all the team sport, I think it's, you know, everyone has their own job and everyone has to fill their job in order to be successful. And I think sometimes it kind of, you know, if you're not in the right mindset, if you're in a negative mindset, it gets difficult. So I do understand that fear. Um, so that's, I guess, that's what wants me. Um, I think what's different is, you know, I actually, I don't really know. I mean, obviously sports different, but um, I can't really think of anything that I found different, really. Um, I, I, I found it was a very interesting film. But I, yeah, I can't really think of anything different. That's I'm sorry. That's, no, no apologies. All answers are great. Thank you, Nina. How about Dana? Uh, yeah, like how Nina said, I play lacrosse. So I was a little like older when I started playing it than like rather than other people. So it was kind of like different and like the fear of like wondering if you're going to be like good at it or not and like perform well um, for different I'm not sure. I don't know. I feel like it's different because it's not as much as like a heart racer rather than if you're like really high up diving. So that would be different. Nice. Thank you, Dana. Peyton. Hi. So in the film, I thought it was really similar how, well, like Nia said and like Dana said, there is with sports, um, comes along like some stress, especially with the sport that I play, which is also volleyball, um, because it is a team sport and there's a lot of pressure because it's like everybody's counting on one person at a time and it's a team sport. So if one person messes up, it affects everybody as a team. And 
Um, I'm not really sure how it's different from the film, but if anything, I would say maybe it's different because there's not always someone going to be there to give you a push to just overcome it. You just have to know that you can do it yourself and just use that to push through. Thank you, Peyton. I love... Beside you, the lovely lady with long blonde hair. I don't see a name. Um, my name's Carla. Carla. There it is. Hi. Hi. Um, I guess something that's similar is that, like, I'm also really afraid of heights, and I don't think I'd be able to, like, make myself be able to jump, like, by myself. I think I'd definitely need someone to, like, help me um, jump off. But I also play a sport, which is tennis and I usually don't get nervous or like stressed when I'm playing it because it's like I'm relying on myself even though I'm on a team it's like you kind of it's your own thing and you kind of have to do it yourself and then like your team helps you with that but yeah I think that's the only thing that would be different from that. Thank you Scarlett. Arvin. Uh Yes, when I was by the Eiffel Tower, I had fear of height and height. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yes, it was a little bit scary for me. And I needed what means Überwindung. Überwindung. Uh, Andreas, bitte hilf uns. Oh. Uh, means to overcome. Ah, Überwindung. Okay, yeah. good work. Überwindung. I needed overcome uh, to go higher. And yeah, then it worked. Super, thank you, Arvin. Teja in Ljubljana. What was different and what was similar? Or similar and different? Actually, I don't understand what do you mean that. Um, Can you help me, please? Sure. Uh, Marina? So, um, how was the experience you saw in the film similar to your life or overcoming something? Oh, I yeah. understand. Well, I actually didn't have uh, any experience like in the movie or any kind of experience in life. Um, and actually, um, no, I no, no, I didn't have uh, any experience in life like that or any of experience in life. Oh, okay. Well, for next time you come on, you might have, have had one. I'm going to go down to Rachel now. How is the experience in the film similar and different to your life? So the experience in the film kind of reminded me of, um, the feeling that I had when I had to public speak in front of my peers. Uh -huh. um, it kind of like freaked me out to do that because I had the fear of being embarrassed. But something that was like different was that I feel like I had the fear of being embarrassed and the divers had the fear of messing up or actually jumping. Mm. Mm. Thank you, thank you. Davin, hello, how about for you? How is it similar or different? And different, rather, and. Oh, are you there, Davin? 
Okay, let's go up to Anastasia. Anastasia, there you are. Uh, Hi. Me, hello. Uh, for me, it's like I play volleyball, and it's so scary when you see someone that it's I don't know bigger than you, or you know he's older, and you need to play. I don't know, like you're just scared when you go there. <laughs> I don't know how to explain. No, oh, good. You did. Thank you. Thank you. Ileana, how about for you? And we have Hi. One. Go ahead. Wait, um, I'm sorry, but what was the question again? How was the experience in the film similar to your life or different? Well, because I've gone to that kind of pool before, I guess that's how it's similar. It's a big indoor kind with the giant boards. Uh huh. Um, and it was different because everyone's speaking German. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. There you are. Thank you. Alia. Uh, Alia. You'll be the last one because Ileana was so succinct. Thank you, Ileana. Alia, are you there? Okay. Okay. Well, here it is 1030 now and um, my brother's here too. I'm not sure if he answered his question or oh, not. He, he didn't. Good. Please come in, David. Hi. There you are. There you are. So, how was the experience in the film different from your life and similar to your life? Hmm. Well, I'm not sure. It was fairly different, considering that I'm not a diver. Hmm. How about similarities? I don't know. Um, I suppose it was similar considering how it showed him growing up. Uh huh. That's the way you say it. That's very nice. That's very nice. All right, friends. Thank you for that. Whoop. Where did you go? There we are. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to um, send you the film analysis. And two weeks from now, we'll follow up with the recollector. And I will ask you all to wave or say goodbye if you want to show yourselves for a moment for one screenshot. I will appreciate it. Okay, I'm going to take that screenshot in five. Oh, thank you, Anastasia. Anybody else want to come in? Oh, My thank you. My camera isn't working. Okay, then we'll see your name. There we are. Thank you for wearing the mask today. All right, here we are. Screenshot. Everyone say, Screen 360 TV. Woohoo! <laughs> thank you all very much. Wow! Yay! Thank you, this Diddy. This is the first of many, and stay tuned. All right, in, take a 15-minute break, and we're going to present the French film Les Frémissements du Thé, The Way of Tea, in 15 minutes. And if any of you are tempted not to come back in 15 minutes, you're going to miss something special. That is an incredible film, so be Thank here. Thank you, Paul. That's great. See you soon. Just come right back on and log back in. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs>